Where do you have oh, candles? Candles right there. We can use this. Oh! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! No, we got to the Happy birthday to me! I know that's right. I got to say, where do we go to put the candles? Oh, we got candles. Where are the candles? Oh, look. Happy birthday to you. So dry. Happy birthday to you. Okay, go ahead, Kevin. That's fine. Yeah. Make the wish blow down. No? Yeah. Oh. Oh. That's a trick one. Oh. Hey. A little slice for me. It's a little slice. You need a cake. You need a cake. Okay. <laughs> hey, excuse me. Hey, why? Zoom in on the L. Oh. How was that? Is it good? Is it good? Is it good?
who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain we shall have taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, when we live or when we die, we are the Lord. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Our Savior Christ Jesus abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of death and of hell. Because I live, you will live also. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain. For the first things are passed away. Friends in Christ, we have gathered together to celebrate the life of Hubert Winter, one whom God loaned to us for a season. One whose life has touched the lives of others. Let us therefore worship God and give thanks as we celebrate. We sing the hymn, Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father.
Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement. Pray that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace. So that even as we mourn the death of Hubert, one whom we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial, but we may hold fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, O Lord our God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that all fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life. Lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, we are met in this solemn moment to commend Hubert Albert Winter into the hands of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed and in whose name alone we have salvation. Let us then recall to mind the life of our deceased brother and in humble trust hear the words of Holy Scripture. At this time we're going to have a tribute, tribute to my husband by Cohen, and it will be read for us by Nigel Buffon. Following that we'll have a musical selection by Eugene Henry, brother-in-law. That will be followed by another musical selection by Carlton Douglas, friend. That will be followed by a musical selection, Bridge Over Troubled Water, by Marla Morris, Coretta Dal Coletto, and Shirlene Jackson. In that order, and I believe that there may be another that will be shared right after. In that order, please. Good afternoon, church. I'm Dr. Buffon, and I have the privilege of reading this tribute on behalf of my god sister, Corin. Love is a thing that people trivialize and sometimes take for granted. When one looks how the world is presently running, we could be talking to someone one minute and the next minute they have transitioned to our earthly father. Death is inevitable. And unfortunately, we are all appointed to this faith. No escaping it, no telling it, you're not ready, you just have to go. The saddest part of transitioning is that you leave behind those who you loved, who admired you, and those who etched your influence into their soul. Today is a hard day for us and for the Winter family. And such, I will be reading my God sister's tribute to her husband, beginning now. I knew Hubert was the right person for me after our first encounter of romance. He was very affectionate, 
and always wanted to hold my hand and touch me at different parts of my body in public to which I did not appreciate it at first. Since I was feeling uneasy and that everyone was watching. I can remember one lady saying to him that she wished she had her partner like that and he would be affectionate like that to her. I now wish he was still here to hold me in his arms like that before. He was the love of my life. Of course, we had our share of disagreements, but he made sure that we would never go to bed mad at each other. I remember saying to myself one time, this man must be mad because he would caress me or talk as though we never had an argument. He always said, I said what I have to say and it's finished. So if you want to be mad, it's your business. Then he would purposely try doing something to make me smile. He knew how to entertain everyone by making them feel comfortable. My husband was a happy soul. We were opposites in a lot of ways because I'm an introvert and he was an extrovert. Everyone was his friend and I hardly had any. In the beginning of our relationship, I didn't look forward to going out with him, especially the supermarket, because most of the time would be spent having conversations with people. After a while, I would say to him, please don't introduce me to anyone, just let me shop. That didn't work, and I realized I would just have to make Hubert be Hubert. When it came to timing, he was always early. On the other hand, you know, ladies, we always think we have enough time to get ready. I didn't honor time as he did, and that was one of our differences. We got married in October of 2007, which was small and intimate, because I wanted it that way. I know if I had left it up to him, almost the whole of Antigua would have been there. And so I planned every detail. I stood my ground and told him that that's what I wanted. Our union bore two handsome sons. Our first son, Corey, who was born in 2003, and Christian, who was born in 2005. Hubert was a good dad to the kids. He encouraged them in every aspect of their lives. He always made sure he attended their basketball games and was their team's biggest cheerleader. The boys attended the Baptist Academy and the Antique Grammar School. And he was at every program that their school had with a camcorder in his hands. He was a very proud dad indeed. Whenever they did anything out of the way, which was seldom, he would refer to them as, your sons did this, or your sons did that. But whenever they achieved anything good, he would boastfully say, my sons. <laughs> Even though he was sick and hospitalized, he made sure he called me every morning to ask if they were dressed warm, leaving the house for working or school, and then he would call them or send a message asking them the same thing and letting them know that he loved them. Two mornings after he died, our youngest decided he was going to school even though I told him he could stay home. After he left, I called to make sure he was okay and he said, Mommy, I didn't get a call from Dad. It really broke my heart hearing him say that. I also got calls from him making sure I got home safely and to let me know that he loved us. Some men are nice to people outside of their homes, but he was always good to his family. He showed us respect. He showed us love. He was everything to his family and he was the head of the household. To tell you the truth, 
I pray to God and ask him for a loving and kind husband, and my prayers were answered. Thank you, God. Hubert attended the Antigua Grammar School and made sure his sons attended Antigua Grammar School also. You better not have said anything bad about the Antigua Grammar School, or he would boastfully let you know of all the good things he encountered there. My husband was the true meaning of a friend. Someone once told me, if anyone had a problem with Hubert, he is not the problem. They are. He knew how to make the people around him happy and was always giving a helping hand to others. The family man, as he was always called, was a genius for giving information of his family's history. He had so many cousins that I used to tell him to stop buying cousins. Hubert was a lot of things to me. My love, my husband, my companion, my friend, and I will always continue to love him even through death. If the hands of time were hands that I could hold, I'd keep them warm and in my hand they'd not turn cold. Hands we choose the moment that will last the lovely moment that will have no future and no past the comfort from the top of the sweet the comfort in the sound of a lullaby, the innocence of leaves in the spring, but most of all, the moments when love first touched me, all the happy days. Would never learn to fly until the hands of time would choose to wave goodbye. Oh, 
this song is for my dear friend Hubert. He's very ill in New York. He's been my friend for 71 years. And as long as I live, I will never forget his kindness. Not only to myself, but to my wife. Hubert, help me. How I wish, how I wish you were here. Hubert, help me. How I wish, how I wish you were here. Hubert, help me. How I wish, how I wish you were here. Hubert, help me. How I wish, how I wish you were here. Hubert, help me. How I wish, how I w
He is the last child of parents Eric and Alice Sinkles Winter. He had three siblings, Leslie, Eleme, Clement, and Clem. No, it's Clem. Sorry. <laughs> Growing up as a child, he was friendly, jovial, easy to get along with. He made many friends during school, work, and sports, especially cricket. He attended Miss David's school, now the Foundation Big School. And after he went to the Antigua Ram School, he made many friends. Calling all the names will be take for her. On leaving grammar school, he joined John and Francis Andrew, where he did sales and also worked with Air France. He then left Andrews and joined Leah until 1976 when his uncle and very close friend, Cecil St. Luke's, passed. He was, very, he was devastated. He then traveled to Philadelphia, where his sister Helen May lived, to spend his vacation. He never returned until years later. During this period, he fathered two sons, Cecil and Eric, named after his uncle and father. He lived there for 20 years before returning to Antigua in 1995. He then rejoined Andrew Wholesale, where he worked until he retired. He would loved all kinds of sports. His favorite, cricket, his favorite was cricket, and he was very passionate about the West Indies and their failures. He later met Corin Abbott. They became very close, got married, and the relationship saw the arrival of two sons, Corey and Christian, both residing in the United States. He had some medical issues and saw several doctors in Antigua and the USA. He traveled to Philadelphia in 2021, saw specialists, and the news was not good. He was in and out of the intensive care for several months until he passed on January 2nd, 2023. Had he lived, he would have been 72 years old on March 11th. It is so sad that he is no longer with us to see his last son graduate. He wanted to be there so much for that occasion. In closing, he would always joke about us leaving him at the cemetery. He said he would follow behind us because he does not want to be left alone. On behalf of the family, we say thank you to the doctors, nurses at home and overseas. The band's funeral home, Reverend Brown, Ebenezer and Pizarro Methodist churches, all who presented tributes to Ms. Valerie Gonzalez Guerrero for her professional support, and finally to all of you gathered here today. May the soul of our dear departed brother, husband, father, and friend rest in peace and rise in glory. Thank you. We'll now stand and sing the hymn, To God be the glory, great things he has done.
Amen. You may be seated. We now share the ministry of the word. The first scripture reading comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1 to 8. It will be read for us by Lorraine Cephas, a niece. Following that, we'll have the second scripture reading, Revelation 21, 1 to 7, by Pat Bird, a friend. For everything, there is a season, a time for every matter under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Here ends the reading. Members of the family, friends, the tribute and scriptures you hear today is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he provides consolation, comfort, peace, understanding to wipe away our tears and grief as our beloved Hubert is being lifted to his new home. For the past year, I've been with Hubert and his family, and I stand here as a witness to let you know that Hubert is a Christian. Hubert believed that Jesus Christ was Lord and Savior, and Jesus Christ loves all of us, and he doesn't want to see anyone miss out on heaven. Today's scripture comes from second reading, Revelations 21, 1 through 7. John, a disciple of Christ, was given a vision of this new home, heaven. And he tells us, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the hope of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself, will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning, crying, and pain will be no more. For the first things has passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I'm making all things new. 
Also he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I'll give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God. And they will be my children. Oh, excellent is the name of God. We now sing the hymn. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. Trust and obey for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey, the end of which will remain standing for the reading of the Holy Gospel. St. John chapter 14, reading verses 1 to 6 and verse 27. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ, O Lord. Amen. You may be seated. It 
In this your hour of bereavement, my beloved family, I extend to you the condolences of my family and the Ebenezer and Casada Gardens Methodist Church families, and indeed the entire Methodist Church family here in Antigua, on the death of your loved one, our brother Hubert Winter. It is only in times like this when we mourn the death of our loved one that we come to know and experience in fullest measure the consolation of God's promise. Our Lord Jesus declared and affirmed, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. And so in the fellowship of this faith that we share, we extend to you a loving hand of sympathy and understanding. And we assure you of our prayerful support as you continue through the grieving process. May you find comfort and peace in the all-embracing and supporting arms of Jesus, who is the Christ. In your time of grief, occasioned by the death of your husband, your brother, your father, your uncle, your cousin, your co-worker, your friend, Brother Hubert, I want, to, I want you to be encouraged by the words of Scripture. The psalmist assures us that when we are overwhelmed by life's experiences that causes us to be broken by situations that cause us pain and sorrow, the psalmist reminds us that our time of weeping may endure for the long night, but joy comes with the morning. Your pain, your sorrow will not last forever. Your season of grief will pass and you'll be able to smile again even as you give God thanks for the gift of the life of Hubert. The psalmist also affirms that we can look to God, who is our refuge and strength. We look to God who is a very and ever-present help when we experience trouble and pain. The psalmist also notes that in the darkest times of our lives, he reminds us that the Lord is our light and our salvation. He reminds us that because the Lord is, and when we make him our light and our salvation, then we do not need to fear. Because we would have made the Lord the stronghold of our lives. And it is important for us to do that because it is in our weakness that God makes us strong. You know, sometimes you may depend on a family member or a friend, but sometimes that family member or friend has his or own troubles to deal with and may not be available as a shoulder for you to lean on. But we know that we can always lean on the Lord when we experience trouble in our lives. With the psalmist, we too can have confidence in the Lord who has been and who continues to be our dwelling place, even throughout the generations. Today we celebrate life in the midst of death. We celebrate the life of Hubert, who lived 
and who touched his peers, his family, his friends, and he served his generation. No, I did not know Brother Hubert personally. And hence what I share today will be based on what was presented. I mean, we share one or two things in common. Because we're told that he was the baby of the family, right? And he had, his two sisters were first and then his brother was just before him. Are you go. <laughs> One sister. <laughs> All right, well, if so, you go. <laughs> but, me and my brother came side by side, right? He was just before me, and I don't know, Brother Clem, if you and Hubert were the same, but we used to fight every day. Brothers, now me fought a lot. It was play. But then you know how play turns out sometimes. But nonetheless, but Hubert was described as one who was friendly, a very jovial person, and one who you could get along with easily. He shared in the aviation industry, and he was a sportsman, an avid cricketer had a passion for West Indies cricket. And of course, had his heart broken many times by their failures. <laughs> but what's, what's new? The good thing is that he was old enough to appreciate the good old days when West Indies dominated. And the truth be told, my heart breaks these days. I don't have to say anything more, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. But I too remember the good old days when the West Indies dominated and so that kept, that kept me, I guess, on the good side. Hubert was described as being very straightforward. He was one who was always on time. He was genuine, he was proud, he was a teacher, he was a perfectionist, he was a storyteller, he was a role model, he was loving, he was kind, he was ambitious, he was helpful, he was a family man. He was tall and handsome and charming, down to earth, and affectionate. I'm not going to repeat anything that his wife said. <laughs> She said that, I'm not going to repeat anything about that, I'll leave that right alone, that is between the two of them. <laughs> he was one who stood in the gap, and indeed that's what families are for. He was a joker, I guess, well, he joked about many things. He was a cheerleader and a companion. I believe as we think about how his life was described, he would have touched many persons in many different ways. And he would have made a significant contribution to his family, his friends, and those who knew him, being a true friend. We thank God for his life and his life's witness and for all of the lessons that he taught. I want to believe that his children will hold on to those memories and his siblings and others will hold on to those other memories. The children will hold on to the life's lessons and share them with generations to come that his legacy will live on. 
But the Hubert lived for just short of 72 years. And we thank God for the many lives that he touched through those years. We note that the scriptures tell us or reminds us. We know of his struggle with his health struggle. But we are reminded that when this tent in which we live on earth is destroyed, there is a house that is built for us by God, an everlasting home not made with human hands. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, teaches that as long as we are in this physical tent, we are going to experience challenges in life. We will be affected by time. We'll be affected by the illnesses because we are indeed limited. But the good news is that when this earthly life is over, when this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God which is eternal in the heavens. And that's why the scripture affirms, for those who know the Lord and live according to his will, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so we want to ensure that we are with the Lord when we are alive. So that when we die, we are still with and in the Lord. And that's why we are challenged to live by faith and not by sight. For to live by sight is to be directed by this earthly life. To be greatly influenced by the here and now. But to live by faith is to be focused and directed by one's eternal destiny. One day, each of us will die. Because we are not on this earth to stay. We are on a pilgrimage. We are on a journey through life. And this journey is temporary. And it is not as important as the destination. The journey is not as important as the destination. Let me tell you, the destination is one of two places. Are you with me? Yeah. Either heaven or hell. You don't like to say them things these days because some people don't like to hear about it, but I'm telling you the truth, right? Our destination is either of those two places. So one's focus must be on the destination. If not, one could easily lose one's way by focusing one's attention on the journey. By all means, yes, appreciate the journey, but never lose sight of the destination. Never forget that the journey is not the destination. God wants us, yes, while on the journey to influence as many persons as possible for the kingdom of God. To point as many persons to the destination. To take as many with you on the journey towards the kingdom, which is our ultimate destination. The problem is that too many people lose focus and are distracted by the journey. They become settled when the journey is to be constantly moving. They become parked, as it were, in a no parking zone. Look, this life is not for us to lay down stakes 
as if we're going to be here forever. Because the truth is, none of us are here to stay. We are passing through this life, and it is ours to touch others and to influence others for good. Ours is to touch others for the kingdom of God. So don't set up kingdoms on earth because earth is not your destination. I need to remind somebody that this journey is temporary and it will end one day. And for many, it ends sooner rather than later. We're here today celebrating the life of Brother Hubert. And we may all feel good and healthy, but who to tell? I might be the next one here. Or you may be. Life sometimes throws a curveball at us. And sometimes when we least expect life changes and I like to say life happens seasons change and so it's only what we do for God that lasts Eternity is permanent and requires preparation. So please give attention to eternity because one day you will have an appointment which you cannot postpone or cancel. When we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ when we will have to give an account of the life we lived. Ecclesiastes 3 tells us that seasons in life changes. There's a time for everything. And even though things change, I want to remind us that God the God we serve, he never changes. He's the same God yesterday as he is today and as he will be forever. We will change. But God never changes. And so it's important for us to keep God in the midst of everything that we do. You know what that says? That says that if our season is one of joy and laughter, God is in the midst. But when we keep God in the midst, even when the season change, God is still in the midst. Even when things are not as good and we may experience sorrow and grief and pain, then God is still with us. And God will help us through those difficult times. I want us to know that God is God. Yes, when we were young and strong and on top of the world. God is still God when we are working and doing well and we are on top of the mountain. But even when life happens and changes and we are in the valley and we are experiencing sorrow and pain and Whatever challenges life will send our way, God is still God. And so if we keep God in the midst of our seasons of life, it will be good for us. Because no matter what happens, God has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He has promised that his grace is sufficient for us in whatever season we find ourselves in life. Look, let me tell you something. 
You see me? I'm not as young as I look. I have reached on top of the mountain and I am smart enough to know that I'm on my way down. What that says to me is that there is not as much time ahead of me as is behind me. It says to me that with each passing day, I am one day closer to my death. And therefore, I must prepare even more so, because death is closer. Any of us look at life that way? Or do we think that life going to last forever? And we make no preparations. And then life happens. Look, I normally ask people several questions now. How many of you have made a will? If you've made a will, put your hand up. Well, maybe you know some people see that you make a will. But my hand is up. And I made, I made my will about 31 years ago. Doesn't mean that you're going to die because you make a will. They're going to die immediately. And that's why some people don't make a will because they think that when they make the will, they're going to die soon. Well, if 31 years is soon, I probably need to make another one. Maybe there'll be another 31. But no, just say. But sometimes as well, we need to also, and I have several orders of service for persons who would have already made up their funeral service so that this is what they want and we can honor their wishes. Doesn't mean that you're going to die, but it means that you are preparing. And this life that we now live is a life of preparation. A preparation for the life which is to come. Some people say when you're dead, you're done. Not at all, so. This earthly life is over, but eternity is there to come. And as I said, you will spend eternity either in heaven or in hell. You have to make the choice. And you make the choice by the life you live. If you love God and you love people and treat them well, you are doing what the Lord wants you to do. If you harass people and treat them bad, no bad thing, that you can go up there. You know, some people can't live with people, they can't get along with nobody. If you can't get along down here, Hello. <laughs> so we need to start living as brothers and sisters and as neighbors. Don't allow the small things to distract us in this life, but let us, in spite of, let us love one another, let us seek to make the life of others better. And a, hymn, uh, a songwriter says, don't go to heaven alone. Can be somebody with you. So influence somebody, hold somebody's hand, pray for somebody and let them know that you're praying for them because you want them to live well. And when you see people going down the wrong road, brother, sister, it's not good. I love you, the Lord loves you, and you're on your way to destruction. But let us encourage others to see to be a blessing to others. And me see some man look for me. And they say, hear about it and talking a little too long now. Anybody said that? Be honest. 
If anybody said that, say praise the Lord. If y'all don't say praise the Lord, I'm going to know that y'all are enjoying, so I have to preach some more. But look, seriously, as I, I encourage you, look to the Lord. Have a relationship with him, because that is what's going to matter. Jesus said, there's no other way to the Father except through me. It is through a relationship with him that we come face to face with our Father. And so we need to build that relationship. We need to watch the life we live. And we need to determine what is our life saying about us at this point. Is it such that it pleases God? And if it is not, then all isn't lost because I'm still alive today. Don't know about tomorrow. So let me do what I can today to change if I need to and make a difference. Be more loving and kind. And let us be the presence of God wherever we go. Our brother Hubert has lived and his life speaks for him. And when you and I die, our life will speak for us. So let us do whatever we can to ensure that we live in such a way that when we die, we will hear the words of our Heavenly Father saying, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. Hubert has lived, he is dead, we can add nothing further. May his soul rest in eternal peace and let it rise in glory. Amen. Amen. We're going to invite the Casada Gardens congregation to render their selection at this time.
Let us now stand and affirm our faith as we say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The hymn, And Can It Be That I Should Gain an Interest in the Savior's Blood. During the singing of this hymn, the ushers will wait upon us for our offerings.
let us pray. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, your gift to us. We thank you also, Lord, for the gift of the life of Hubert, your gift to us. And even as we worship, O oh God, we worship also with our offerings, but more importantly, with the gift of our lives. Bless us and use us with our gifts, that we may be a blessing to others, and that our lives may serve as a signpost directing others to Jesus, who is the Christ. So bless us and use us now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God, our Father, who created us in your own image for eternal fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God, our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We bless your name for the life of Hubert, whom we today lay to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessing his life has brought to others, for his service to his generation according to your will, and for every happy remembrance of his life. We bless you for your mercy and goodness, which have followed him all the days of his life, that now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. Receive him into your perfect kingdom and bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to invite you to stand for the commendation. Eternal God, who have made us all and gave nothing that you have made, and have given your Son for our redemption, we commend our brother Hubert Albert to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto him, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Amen. We're going to join in singing the family prayer together. Uh... 
us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. On behalf of the family, just want you to know how much we appreciate your calls over the past several weeks and months, your cards and everything that you did to make the family feel loved and giving them the support during their time of grief. Your presence here means everything to them. Please continue to keep them in your prayers. And remember, weeks, months, still give a call. Encourage them because the process of grieving continues. Now with that said, the family would want to have some quiet time when we would have left the cemetery to just grieve and to reflect. We trust that you all understand and you will give them that wish. Let us pray. Now the God of peace who brought again from the dead, O Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, Make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The recessional hymn, sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. While we walk the pilgrim 